Welcome to the Nerd Stalker Tech Week podcast update here. I am Adolfo Fronda at Nerd Stalker on Twitter with my cohort. Greg Gloria, a.k.a. Social Greg on Twitter. How you doing, man? This is number 47, by the way. Is it 47? Awesome, man. Yeah. Awesome. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Happy uh, weekend holiday. Oh, yeah. President's That will have weekend. passed by the time most of you see this. So, so what's this? Who needs Google? A uh, rural British uh, community built its own fiber network. Uh, what, they, they just put some glass together or what? Yeah, I love this story. <laughs> so thanks to Boy Genius Report for this. Uh, yeah, so it uh, turns out there's a community in... Uh, in, uh, the BBC is reporting that the rural UK farming community of Lancashire uh, has built its own fiber network with an all-volunteer crew, basically, uh, that are digging trenches and laying down fiber optic cables. They actually have done this. The community is calling itself Project Barn, spelled B4RN, very leet of them to do that, or a broadband for the rural north, and it's pledging to build a community-owned gigabit fiber to the home uh, network. Nice. Uh, BBC News nice. says that the group has exploited all sorts of local uh, expertise from the Lancaster University professor who's an expert in uh, computer computer networks to the farmer's wife who's just retired from a career in IT support and has also gained cooperation from local landowners for free nice. access to fields. Wow. Uh, the result of all this hard work is a super fast fiber network that can... Um, get download speeds of over 900 megabytes per second and upload speeds of more than 500 megabits per second. So um, good on them. They are kicking ASS. Oh, I could use that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I know, isn't it right? So it brings up, of course, that whole, uh, that whole notion of uh, how bad, you know, the Internet is for everyone, really, or most people. Uh, in the yeah. U.S. and apparently in the U.K. too, if they have to resort to this and doing this themselves, uh, especially here where there seems to be a monop uh, quite a, you know, whatever, not quite a monopoly. Yeah, I'd say a monopoly between three networks, maybe two, actually. Yeah, probably two. You would make the argument for that. Yeah. Well, you know, I I, I heard, overheard at the coffee shop this week that when I, I was just cracking up when I heard it because, man, <clears throat> my 4G uh, download is faster than my internet. Yeah. So, but it's awesome when that people. Well, I don't know if it's awesome, but people have been put to this point where they're actually having to just take it into their own hands and dig trenches and lay their own fiber because it's that bad to circumvent well, the system. Well, circumvent the system and all the permits and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I love it. I mean, that good on you. <laughs> good on you, UK. Yeah, I it's amazing it. that yeah. they got landowner cooperation to do all that. That's awesome. Good on them. Way to go, Lancaster. Yeah. Land. Blankets yeah, or however you pronounce yeah. it. Yeah, bring it over here. Bring it to the U.S. and show us how it's done, man. Cool. So, Greg, Raspberry Pi, what's the deal? Hey, they got a video camera. Anyway, mm -hmm. uh, the, thanks to Liz of Raspberry Pi and uh, Anthony Savas of uh, Computer World UK. For this, um, over a week ago, uh, you know, uh, Raspberry Pi introduced their uh, Model A system, which uh, was uh, 10 bucks cheaper than their previous model and had a couple other features. Well... They outdid themselves now. They actually added a video camera, a 5 megapixel video camera, which you're saying, what's the big deal? Well, you don't need a USB port for this, folks. It just attaches via ribbon cable, and I, I think that, that adds to the extra dimension what you could do with the Raspberry Pi, don't you think? Yeah, that's totally great. What can't you do with the Raspberry Pi? I just like uh, posted a uh, article today on how you can uh, automate your home with Siri and, and uh, one of those guys, right? Well, I, I think didn't, didn't we talk about one of the podcasts last year that uh, they even have uh, XBMC integrated on on a Raspberry yeah. Pi? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that is right. So yeah. hey, let's go to the next one. Uh, how Tempo botched their App Store launch? Oh, yeah. well, really? So uh, yeah, I did a <laughs> I did a post on this on NerdStalker.com. I'm really bringing this mm. up, you know, not well maybe to berate on them a little bit, but so anyways, there's this uh, application if you guys don't know called Temple that was released uh, under the auspices of uh, SRI. SRI is the creator of Siri. Within SRI, there's a startup, and the startup created this app called Tempo. They have several startups, obviously, because they're kind okay. of these autonomous teams under SRI. Um, and this this app was hailed by all the you know all the important tech people. They gave this story about about this app got a ton of press in terms of you know the tech press, and um, so people went and installed the application. It's called Tempo. If you want to check it out for iOS, uh, I would recommend you don't. Um, and then everyone tried to <laughs> in order to you could install it and you could launch it, but then there's something that says register right to use it. You need to register for an account. 
Uh, there was a Facebook, okay. LinkedIn, and an email option to sign up for this thing. Unfortunately, you could not do any of those, thus rendering the application <laughs> completely effing useless. Right. Um, <laughs> at first, I thought it was just me sort of complaining about this initial process. But then you start reading right. to the point of this day from my original posting, which is about, I don't know, five days ago or something like that. Mm. Uh, the rating for this app has dropped to like, I think, one or two stars in the iOS store because everyone is so like, why do you even release this? And again, I, I post this as a similarity. This is reminiscent of a, a, an app that was launched a long time ago under a lot of fanfare called Color. Also, right, and mm, they had a similar mm. problem, and and also once you started using the thing, there was no one around to use it. But I digress. Uh, going back to this, what I would suggest: startups, please be able to scale. Don't do this. Uh, this, um, you know, <laughs> trying to build up. I, I don't know what the what they were thinking. They couldn't even. I would argue that this is sort of an app. Um, an account aggregation play or something like that, or because they've no, set up okay. an, a reservation system now where you can, I think you reserve a spot or something and you can get the app now, possibly reserve a spot. Anyways, you got to jump all these hoops, totally botched the, the thing. And they had all this great press. People were talking about how, you know, and the few people that did get through and install this thing, some of them are just already complaining because it's a beta product, right? Or alpha or whatever, right? So it's, it's, you know, 1.0 or something like that. And uh, it, it has kinks as well. So this is just oh, wow. a really a mistake. So I would highly suggest startups out there or, or individual who's creating an app, uh, be ready to scale. And especially if you get like a TechCrunch and Scoble kind of bump, uh, you know, you really got to be ready for this kind of thing. Uh, otherwise, just pull it from the app store. You know, don't, don't, don't launch. Uh, I don't understand. Maybe no, they I, need... I mean, did they, did they, do they have a response to this? At all? That right. was their Anything response. The, so their response was they apologized. They didn't. Uh, they didn't realize they would have such interest, um, and that they would create this <laughs> reservation <laughs> system. And so for you to go back and, and reinstall this new application that has this reservation system in it. Oh, um, so it's it's you know it's really yeah. a, a faux pas. Uh, there's I another like app that. uh, that's similar called Mailbox or something like that that's getting a mm. very similar press, and you also have to get on a waiting list. So you know this whole waiting list type of strategy, I think, is a is a losing strategy strategy for the, for these guys. I, I understand that they're trying to create buzz and, and demand and stuff like that, but I think it's really lame. Well, thanks to uh, Azaz uh, Hawk of uh, Uber Gizmo for this. Uh, so President Obama lashed out uh, at patent trolls this week uh, during his Google Plus Hangout. Isn't he a cool president? I like that. He, he does hang out. I like that. And said that his administration attempts at uh, patent reforms has only gone about halfway or where they should be or should have been. Uh, in response to an entrepreneur who raised a question about uh, her friends being afraid to really start new businesses because of patent trolls, President Obama said they don't actually produce anything themselves. They're essentially trying to leverage and hijack somebody else's ideas and see if they can extort some money out of them mm. right on, awesome. right on. That's great so, to hear. So I, I, I think, uh, you know, I'm glad we outed them. I, I mean, I, you know, I don't know how if that's going to stop them or anything, but, you know, at least you know, bring some light to it that the president is actually looking at it. Let's uh, let's talk about the next one, uh, Nokia or Nokia. Uh, May follow Apple and dump Samsung as a supplier. Uh, yeah. Well, wow, what's going on there? Man? Yeah. So uh, this one's coming from Apple Insider too. Yeah. Samsung's ri uh, rise as a top smartphone vendor may be costing its business as a component supplier. An unnamed hardware industry source told Apple Insider that Nokia Nokia is planning to follow Apple's lead in dropping Samsung as a supplier for smartphone parts to avoid boosting a company that has already become a top competitor. Makes sense, right? While Samsung seems capable of surviving the loss of Apple's business, losing Nokia could put a squeeze on the company since Nokia is still the second largest mobile phone vendor in the world. Uh, a lot of people forget that. On the other hand, Samsung seems to think it can make up for lost business simply by supplying parts for its own Galaxy S and Galaxy Note devices, both of which have become premier smartphone brands and are some of the best-selling devices of the past year. So, but, Greg, yeah. happy Valentine's Day. Yeah. Not. Uh, Not. To Google, see you in court. What's the deal here? Well, thanks to Bobby Johnson of Gigom on for this story. Uh, so a British man has found some sympathy in the courts uh, because Google did not delete false comments about him on a blogger fast enough. <laughs> well, so does this open up something here, uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, internet regulation or something like that? Huh. So 
Um, you know, this guy, uh, Payam Tamiz, uh, in the hometown of Margate, you know, the wannabe po politician has discovered a way to get uh, the giants of the Internet to sit up and take notice. So this week, uh, yeah, Tamiz uh, made, made a wave with appeal against Google, which uh, he was trying to sue them over defamatory comments uh, about him made on blogger posting. Mm. So uh, in a case that goes back to like 2001 or uh, 2011, actually, mm. and uh, – you know, he's he. You know, Google did delete him, but you know, only after five weeks of going back and forth on this. Uh -huh. um, so, uh, you know, this is. A, I thought this was interesting, not because I, I feel bad for Tamiz. I I actually think I'm thinking about what about all the bloggers out there and comments that are put on your um, your site. This guy is claiming it's Google's responsibility, not yours. And yeah. Hey, it's Speed Rat. <laughs> Okay, take us on there, man. Take yeah. us in the speed round. So, uh, Talking 20. This is a, a story I recent, recently did on a startup here that um, what they do is they, essentially you send it and you mail in your blood, right? So you do a couple, prick yourself and do a couple drops, send in your blood, and you get a baseline. And, and a baseline for a lot of oh, biohackers okay. out there know what that is. If you're interested in your own sort of health and that, this and that, you send this to things and they give you all this information online to tell you we're deficient in certain things, whether it's vitamin D, vitamin whatever, C, and this and that. And it can That's really cool. help you. And they give you a ton of information, supposedly, on all this stuff. Um, but right. not only does that just give you, and not only is, are they super cost competitive, you know, I think it's the lowest price I've ever seen for this type of service. Because typically you go to the doctor, you know, he wants you to do, he or she wants you to get some blood work done, and um, you, they just tell you, you're fine, kind of thing. You don't get any kind of information. Here you're bypassing the doctor altogether. You just send in the thing, they take care of it in their labs, okay. give you the information online, okay. and uh, you're golden, right? And you're doing it at a really great cost point, too. Uh, but not mm. only that, I, I, the value, actually, and, and this is what Heather Hine, uh, the CEO of Talking20, uh, sort of slipped mm. really quickly by, was the data that they get um, right. in mass. So it's not only them, Talking20. They're one example of several startups that are going to emerge, I believe, in this sort of space that are going to be able to aggregate this data and, thanks to big data, sort of share it, hopefully, among the you know, the masses. And so what typically mm -hmm. was done in the past was that um, researchers would have to do an experiment on a controlled group, right, of whatever, right, maybe right, 100, right. Uh, 300 people or something like that. When you get giant data like this and you put it up to the cloud, you get potentially, you know, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, right, uh, worth of data. So you probably can get a all kinds of amazing research information on this, like health trends, where people are uh, by ge geographic, uh, gender, age. I mean, it could be crazy. We're talking about things that could extend life on the best case scenario, okay. right? So um, obviously that will, your mileage will vary if you're like an overweight smoker who, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> drinks a lot. Your mileage you're probably right. going to have one less surgery that you will need right if you follow some of this advice mm -hmm. whereas the uber athlete will be able to you know perform at an even crazier level uh, these are the opposite ends of the spectrum and then this sort of leads to the life extension type of thing too but anyways this this big data is uh in terms of health is a super fascinating early stage sort of space uh that i'm getting more and more uh bullish on that's for sure Okay, well, I got, hey, the geeks out of Japan right here. So uh, Japan's National Institute of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, what is this? Light <laughs> controlling <laughs> sheet switches between mirror and transparent states. Greg, what is, explain, please. I, I, you know, I'm a geek. I'm an electrical engineer, so I, I love this thing. So so normally uh, what you do, what was done in the past is that uh, films on a piece of glass were the ones you could use as, uh, to uh, either darken or lighten a piece of glass. Well, it, t it actually, for, 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 for glass, it's actually quite slow, and they can't really do it that quickly. So uh, what the uh, researchers at the Japan's uh, National Institute of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology um, uh, did was they created this film that could be sandwiched between two pieces of glass, and uh, what it was really cool is what they do is they, they, um, uh, the the air inside those two pieces they basically create hydrogen out of, and then they electrify it, and it, it actually makes the the glass uh, tinted at that point. It, it's very simple. It, it's hmm. a lot 
less costly, um, very simple to do. Um, so I think this has a kind of interesting breakthrough because with the films on the glass, what would happen is sometimes heat would get dissipated back in the room, <laughs> hmm. and you have to add other coatings on there to reflect it back out. Now, this Jeez. type of technology could block off all that type of stuff and, you know, and, and not – let any heat into the into the room due to the actual uh, uh, electrifying of the films on on the glass. So wow. it was actually I thought it was kind of cool. It it, it, it could be big, mm. um, and and a cheap way of actually uh, getting some of these uh, energy efficient glasses that uh, that we've kind of wanted for a long time now here. So mm. uh, I just thought it was kind of cool. Very so, cool, man. Yeah, yeah. We'll put we'll put the link to that and uh, we'll move on. So, what's your story about Posturus? Yeah, so Posturus is <laughs> yeah. shutting down on April thirtieth, uh, but you can back up everything is what they say. So, get ready out there, everyone uh, who's been using Posturus, as I have been using it quite a bit uh, for various different endeavors. And so, it broke my heart because they were the early, probably one of the first uh, sort of blogs that allowed you to email your your blog entries in so you didn't even have yeah. to deal with any sort of WYSIWYG interface or anything like that uh, now a lot of those services provide that but they were free you know uh, obviously they were acquired by Twitter and Twitter is shutting them down now as everyone sort of rumored and thought they would um, but the uh, the founders of Posturus are taking that money and they were kind of they were really bummed out actually to see Posturus be shuttered and uh, mm. what they've done is they've created something called Post Haven. Post Haven is is what they claim is a safe place for all your posts forever. Uh, so they're going out the gate and saying it's going to be five dollars a month. And uh, what they're going to do is they're writing the code from scratch. They're going to try to incorporate all the features that Posturus had ever so slowly, you know, as as they can. And they pledge to uh, never sell to anyone or take any venture capital or anything like that. So. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, again, because they were bummed out to to see what what happened to their baby. You know, in one in one sense, but yeah. uh, they also cashed in too. So, uh, what whatever. Um, so uh, I'm excited to see what what Post Haven does. You know, they got a lot of competition with Squarespace, and, and now we see Medium and and some other uh, uh, type of blogger and other solutions out there too, and WordPress, right? Um, but we shall see. We shall see. So. Hey, well, this comes out of Japan. Um, they developed this personal smart trash can outfielder that can catch your trash. Oh, um, cool. So uh, some uh, – yeah, it's pretty cool yeah, actually. So what, what this thing does is that um, it will actually detect while the uh, your trash is in air, if you're throwing like a piece of paper into a trash can, it will actually move and catch, catch it into its basket. It's really kind of cool yeah. actually. So uh, there's a video on there uh, we'll share a link to, but um, – yeah, this this story breaks from uh, Diginfo TV, which really has some cool tech videos, uh, you know, geek videos uh, from Japan. And, uh, you know, it's developed by an engineer um, uh, at a Japanese automaker. They won't name the name. You know, it's probably Toyota. Um, but um, – and he, he won a excellence award at the – Japan Media Arts Festival, oh, wow. cool. and basically a uh, sensor detects the position of the trash in air, <laughs> sends the information to PC, PC calculates where it's going to fall, and then we start thing uh, accordingly. We're done. Tip time. Anyway, let's go tip time, tip time. Tip time, yeah. So my tip of the week is uh, iOS Workflows is a collection of ways to automate data sharing in iOS, thanks to life hackers. Thorin Klazowski for this uh, particular tip. Uh, if you want to automate something in an iOS, you uh, have to use one of a few methods. It's a uh, pain a little hard to understand. Thankfully, GitHub user Christopher White collected a ton of these workflows together on one page. Right now, the listing includes workflows for 1Password, Drafts, and Google Chrome, uh, and a few more. Mm -hmm. uh, these workflows automate everything ranging from the uh, sharing of data to application launching and more. Essentially, it's a way to create links mm -hmm. between apps to bridge them together. For example, you can create a chain where Launch Center Pro opens a HTTPS link in one password from your clipboard, or you can create a bookmarklet to send something from Safari straight into drafts. It's a cool and ever-growing project. Wow, so awesome. if you wanted to dig into some of the uh, often complicated but incredibly cool ways to automate actions in iOS, this, it's a really great place to start. So uh, thanks to uh, Christopher White for putting that together. And check it out on GitHub. We'll include the link in the, in the show notes. Greg, your tip. Very nice. Oh, yeah, well, hey, can you create a story in 140 characters? Uh, well, uh, this app allows you to do that. <laughs> um, I, I, we interviewed a person 
uh, called Juan Pablo Gaviria from uh, 360 Digital, oh, a wow. company in Colombia this wow. week. We released that uh, story this weekend. Mm -hmm. And um, he has a really great transmedia um, uh, twist to this. So he created this company to create uh, digital media for children. Oh. And uh, you know he created a couple ebooks, and uh, so he took the, some characters out of the ebooks and moved it into this uh, iOS app that allows you to kind of creative, creatively create stories. So the, the idea here is that uh, you create a title to the story, um, and you get uh, three words: uh, an easy, medium, uh, and a hard word. You know that you have to integrate into a 140 characters space. You do that. You send it off to a friend that you're competing against, then they do they get the same thing, but based on the same title of the story. Mm. And basically, after 10 pages of a story, which you know they, they, he felt that that would create a pretty in interesting story, the person with the most points um, uh, wins. Mm. And so I thought this was kind of a cool um, uh, story to kind of get ed you know kind of fun back in yeah, writing that sounds for like, yeah, kids. Yeah, sounds like fun. And, and yeah, yeah. And, and 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 basically they use this char the characters from the ebook. Um, one's named uh, Astro, aka Paperboy, and and then there's the evil Doctor Mister Sharks, who's the um, the guy who's trying to suck uh, creativity from kids <laughs> as the headmaster of the school. So uh -huh. I mean, yeah, and, and you have to defeat Mister Sharks. So uh, you know, so there's a lot of a lot of things that you know, listen to the interview. He talks about a lot about some of the reasons why. Uh, he feels it's necessary to kind of uh, bring creativity back to the classroom where it belongs. And he also talks about some entrepreneuring tips, you know, from starting it up uh, from scratch. Oh, so, that's great. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it's good. That's my tip of the week, yeah, my friend. Yeah, go check that out. So, Greg, we got events coming up. What's up? We got SF New, uh, SF Music Tech and uh, yeah. all SF New Tech and more. Tell us about what's happening. Yeah, well, um, you know, the Brian Zisk and the boys uh, have this thing going on at uh, San Francisco, Japantown at Hotel Kabuki yeah. called SF Music Tech on uh, February 19th, uh, Tuesday. Um, they have a pretty full day of events yeah. uh, in five different uh, venues within Hotel Kabuki. So, uh, you know, catch it. If you haven't got tickets, you can still go to www.sfmusictech.com to uh, order your tickets. Um, it, it really – they have – Adolfo and I went uh, offline, went over the agenda or the schedule. There's some pretty cool yeah. stuff in there. Uh, you know, anything. And music, the parties uh, look great too. Like, and the and wow. the and the guests too. I mean, they have a lot of celebrities coming out. I know there's a uh, Incubus is going to be there. I think speaking or something like that. And there's uh, some other yeah. uh, who Michael Franti as well of a uh, you know a Spearhead and then Disposable Heroes of Hypocrisy is going to be there. It's going to be awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, There's yeah, a yeah. lot of amazing uh, artists that will be there, and, and uh, as well as incredible uh, tracks and stuff to learn about all kinds of uh, the music business and technology and marketing and all kinds of stuff. Well, you know who else is going to be there? Hmm. Nerd Stalker. So we're going to be there live <laughs> uh, catching interviews. <laughs> Great. Got to plug yeah, that. Yeah, kicking uh, butt over there. That's going to be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, that's going to be very fun. It's going to be a, a full day for me, uh, and then an after party after that. So yeah. um, I'll see Adolfo there yeah. for that one as well. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, we got SF New Tech on Wednesday, the twentieth, uh, at Mighty One Nineteen Utah Street, San Francisco, California. Uh, we got uh, some startups uh, presenting called uh, Pedison App, uh, Walk Me, uh, Blipboard. Uh, uh, Yo Yak, <laughs> Bizabo, nice. uh, and more. You know, uh, and, How and user you know, friendly. one of them. Yeah, I, you know, it, and it, it tongue tied me. I, I can't believe they came up with these names. <laughs> I don't know who came up with these names, but, but anyway, it doesn't matter. We'll be there. We'll be video streaming live. Uh, doors open at 5:30. Uh, pitches start at 7:30, and uh, Adolfo and I will probably ha either have a pre-show or a post-show or both. Yeah. You know, just catch us on live on UStream there. That's right. We'll, We'll entertain you at least. That's right. So, so speaking of catching us, if you want to contribute stories to NerdStalker, please use the hashtag NRDSDK, NerdStuck, uh, and we will definitely uh, consider your story for the uh, podcast here. And uh, also check us out at uh, NerdStalker.com. we got a ton of stories there already all the time. And uh, Or just subscribe to the iTunes uh, if you want to get the audio or video feed. Uh, go there, and we would definitely appreciate a five-star rating. It really helps us out in terms of uh, bumping us up in the relevant 
and see there. And um, also check us out on the our twenty four uh, seven channel on uh, iBroadcast TV, uh, Nerd Stalker on there. And uh, also check out uh, Social Time. Hopefully Greg and uh, Social Media Sean will get together and, and bang one out of the park here with uh, some awesome yeah. social media information. Oh, and also and check us out on YouTube. This week. Check us out on YouTube. Yes. More importantly, go to Nerdstalker TV in the search and uh, on yeah. YouTube, and there we are, and it's all kinds of gold. So what you were saying about Social Time. Hey, well, we got uh, Social Time in the cooker this week, so watch out for a uh, pod, uh, ep- podcast episode from uh, Social Media Sean and I this week talk about some social stuff. And, uh, you know, I think we got some other things planned. We will announce that a little later. Yeah. We got some, maybe a new person joining our crew. It would be kind of <laughs> exciting about that. So, Good stuff. Anyway, um, how can they contact you, uh, my friend Adolfo? So you can contact me at Nerdstalker on Twitter or email me, Adolfo, A-D-O-L-F-O, at Nerdstalker.com. Also, uh, if any of you people out there in New York are interested in interning or something like that, we're uh, considering someone out there to help us out and... And uh, we got a lot of opportunities for you. Anyways, Greg, and you, how do we contact you? Well, you can contact me uh, on email at socialgreg at nerdstalker.com or on Twitter at, at socialgreg. So, uh, you know, love to hear from you guys. And yeah, use that hashtag NRDSTK to, to get noticed for any one of the stories on our podcast. So, anyway. All right, Greg. Thanks so much. Thank you for uh, listening and watching, everyone. Okay. Be careful out there. <laughs> <laughs>